Hello everyone, this is Evan from The Trade Risk here on Wednesday, January 27th with a market recap video. We are first going to analyze the current market environment. We're going to look at some other markets, leading and lagging sectors, and then get into some individual names. Now today, Wednesday, Fed Day, uh, the market not reacting so favorably to the comments out by the Fed this afternoon. Uh, we ended up closing down 1.09% in the SPY ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So let's take a look at where we've come from where we are and you know where we might be able to go from here. Uh, so 2016, of course, we started with this brutal downtrend this year for the first two and a half weeks. Uh, became really overstretched, really oversold to the downside here. And then last Wednesday, this was sort of the mini capitulation day where we put in this big reversal looking candle and then we proceeded to bounce two days strongly here to close out the week. Uh, on Friday, on last week. Since then, we've basically gone sideways trading up and down days in this narrow sort of three-point sideways range here in the SPY. And today, uh, you're finally starting to see what could be um, a thrust off of this important resistance level. So there's only two levels I'm looking at right now. Um, as we as we were beginning to rally here in the SPY, um, 190, 190, 50 or so in the SPY, this is an important area. Uh, and, and still an area that the market can't take out. Uh, above there, we have uh, 194.50 and into this 195 level. That's sort of the next, uh, that's the next spot where I would look to, um, to see the market um, sort of have some hesitation and, and, and maybe trade to, but encounter some overhead supply. So currently, uh, we are still battling this 190.50 area. This coincides with you know last week's highs yesterday's highs um, and today we were briefly above it but once those comments came out the market sort of knee jerked lower and um, you know thrusted down didn't uh, well we did take out yesterday's opening print um, so we did close you know certainly lower than yesterday and almost um, lower than the entire trading session yesterday um, but we really need to see in my opinion, uh, a close be lower than you know 188, 187.50 to start taking out these prior few days of, uh, of sessions here and start to make a trade back to the lows. That that still is the path of least resistance. Again, look at these fast moving averages. Now they are still very bearishly uh, sloping lower. Uh, there's still momentum here to the downside. Path of least resistance certainly still lower. Um, so I think that's what you need to be careful of today. Was the this sort of um, just another kind of fake out and we're going to open up tomorrow and, and continue to just battle it out and chop people up in this range? Or uh, was today the, the, the start to what could be um, a retest of the lows or perhaps continuation lower uh, in the trend that we started basically in 2016? Now, the SPY actually performed better uh, than all the other indices today, mostly helped by crude oil and uh, and some of the sectors there. We'll, we'll look at that in a bit. If we look at IWM, the Russell, um, not too much uh, uh, underperformance here either 1.37 percent still in this range you could see we did um, bounce very minorly here on the lows basically from yesterday and and this week uh, so we're still hanging in there you really need to see this 99 level get cracked uh, and close to the downside I think that would start to get you some more follow through and, and get you a, a faster retest of of the lows here from last Wednesday so again still chopping around and frustrating you know probably the majority here um, as there's no real direction in the in the immediate in that short term time frame. Uh, now we look at the Qs, 2.48% um, to the downside, mostly impacted here by the heavy, heavy weighting in Apple um, as it traded lower off of its earnings yesterday. So this one you can see clearly took out the previous day's lows and made new weekly lows and closed at um, you know new weekly lows here. Uh, today. So again, we'll have to see, can this, um, you know, is this going to continue lower? I know we have some more earnings announcements out today, uh, but really needs to get back under this $100 level. And then perhaps we see more continuation lower. If you zoom out here, you can see this is a big level. This was, um, this was the October lows here. Um, so unlike the SPY, the IWM, we're already below those levels. Uh, but, but the Qs here are still basically holding on to them. So this is a very important level here for the market uh, and structure we need to see if this can hold here in the queues uh, for the remainder of this week. Now, if we look at some other markets, uh, TLT, 
still holding up really strong uh, above all the fast moving averages you get a nice trend here you're above resistance this looks good um, closed flat on the day but still um, you know holding up very well here uh, as, as an asset class in general for 2016 USO uh, this one surprisingly held up pretty well today this 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 certainly did help the spy um, out as, as a lot of the energy names or are, are make a big component there um, so you know oil held its held itself up today you can still see some of these topping tails, uh, you know, from yesterday and today. Not a strong close on the highs, but still, nevertheless, I mean, a good start. You know, quite frankly, we're still in a very damaged chart. You still have all the fast moving averages racing lower. It still could use certainly, uh, you know, plenty of time moving sideways here. We don't have to, you know, I don't think a V-shaped rally, you know, to, to $40 oil um, is, is you know, the, the likely scenario. I think we just need to kind of move sideways here. I think so far it's doing what it needs to do. Is this the bottom? I'm not sure. Uh, but, um, you know, if we can move sideways here for a week or two or three uh, between, you know, eight fifty and ten dollars or nine fifty, something along that range, that would be very constructive. Start to get these moving averages turning around, flipped around to the right positive direction. And you might get a better trade there uh, in the next you know, coming days, weeks, uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. But for now, um, you know, uh, the damage, the, the complete waterfall has at least stopped momentarily. Let's see how this continues in the for the rest of the week. UNG, this one's still struggling a bit here. Uh, it's moving sideways. I like the tight pattern here. You can already see I have this line drawn. I'm looking uh, for a break of this to potentially short uh, UNG back to the lows here from December. Uh, you know, so far it's, it's, it's just moving sideways getting tight building that energy you can see the fast moving average is still above price right now kind of pressing down uh, creating that resistance above it tried to get going today couldn't um, so I'm watching this for a trade to the downside but um, and, you know unless it closes and starts to break below 770 I'm not forcing anything there'll be no trade uh, unless this starts to really roll over so something I'm watching gold continues to make headway here again clearing this 104 prior breakdown area from um, you know November of last year this is you know constructive the trend is now higher in the short term still in a messy range overall long term structurally still damaged in, in a downtrend in the long term for gold uh, but right now we're seeing this bit of a relief rally so that is constructive and silver trying to follow suit here you can see it's battling with this breakdown area a lot of um, you know a lot of influence right around here at this area so let's see if silver can continue its its march higher but you can see momentum starting to pick up here on silver so you could see a nice pop here up to fill some of these gaps back here from november i like it um still was just a little stretched and not convinced enough but i do like the trade was watching it for um a, a long uh signal trade but um just haven't got that yet now if we look at some individual sectors. I mean, everything's still pretty damaged. I mean, notably, of course, still, um, you know, the defensive uh, areas of the market. So utilities are still holding up. The staples are still holding up relative to, um, you know, the rest of the group. Um, and, and and also, you know, notably, even though they were down um, a little bit today, but financials held in there today. Now, now they have been big laggards this year. They, they certainly helped um, you know, accelerate this downtrend to start the year off, but they did hold up and especially some individual names. I saw some action in there uh, that looked at least mildly constructive. Again, still very beaten up, but, um, you know, could still be just working off some of those extreme oversold conditions. But uh, XLF looking um, like it may want to start to uh, perhaps hold in there or lead us, you know, if, if I really want to say the word lead because that may not be the right word there, but um, keep an eye on the financials. I think they could be interesting going forward. Now, if we look at uh, some individual names, Apple, certainly the big news here, uh, earnings were out 6.5% down day on Apple, probably the biggest in some time. Uh, the gap from this morning didn't even, um, you know, really didn't even get much of an attempt to get filled. So we still have that open gap. And uh, we basically closed at the lows from last Tuesday. So Apple looks in trouble here, looks vulnerable. The trend remains lower. There shouldn't be anything uh, that much of a surprise. 
the trend has been down in Apple for quite some time here. So uh, it looks like it's going to continue looking um, looking lower here. Uh, you know, there's a I can I can notice a big gap here back from uh, 2014. Perhaps that needs to get filled. That's all the way down at 77, 78 dollars. Um, you know, again, not in a straight line, but perhaps that's some lo longer term target that Apple's working towards. We'll have to see. Still, you know, looks in trouble. Um, it's you know just a guess if you're trying to knife catch this here. Uh, I don't see any evidence to try and step in and buy this. Google, uh, you know, feeling some pressure. It's feeling the Apple effect, if you will. 2.21% down, rolling over here. Still above last week's highs um, and, um, you know, uh, above $700. So still downtrend in the short term. So we'll have to see how this one acts going forward. Netflix really hit hard today, coming into some big support. So this was, these were prior levels that held in Netflix right around $90, right above $90, uh, going back in mid-2015. So this is an important level if it starts to roll over from here. Um, you know, you do have some room to move lower. This has been in a monster uptrend. So, um, you know, it, it really could unwind, fill some gaps that it left from the upside here back, you know, right around um, in May. There's, there's one at 85 dollars big one here right around seventy dollars again might be long-term targets not sure I'm not calling for those to get filled but um, just keep an eye on that keep an open mind um, again don't see too much evidence right here now to try and dip by on Netflix Amazon uh, again, rolling over a bit here today, 3%. Uh, similar, looks similar to Netflix, right? Um, I don't think this one's had earnings yet, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Still above last week's lows. Facebook is out after the close, and as I look at it now at about quarter past uh, the hour, looks like it's trading right around $98 or so, $98.99. So basically, uh, almost at yesterday's highs. Uh, so it essentially has reversed today's session uh, currently where it's trading right now. You can see if it's right around here, this is going to be a tough spot for it. Declining fast moving averages, prior resistance. All the way down, you know, until it gets back over $100, it's going to be a messy uh, a messy fight right in here, right between $98 and $100. And that looks like wh where it's uh, where it's trying to trade at right now in the after hours. So we'll have to see what happens with that come tomorrow on the open. Uh, what else? Do we have Twitter? This one down a bit today, still in bearish trend above the lows from last uh, week, which is constructive. Otherwise, there's nothing constructive here. GoPro continues to um, just trade in its misery down here. New range that's developed between 1040 and you know 11 and a quarter, 11 and 15 cents. Maybe something comes of that. You got a big open gap here from its earnings and or I don't even think that was just some statement, I believe. Um, and uh, it is above last week's lows, which is mildly constructive. Finally, Alibaba, um, this one just hanging sideways here. Don't think this has been in earnings yet. Uh, trying to hold up, you can see it's trying to carve out a base. Looks semi-constructive, but you still have these fast moving averages racing lower still need to see this go sideways a bit more uh, and then Tesla actually this one's another vulnerable one here coming into some very big support that's held for multiple years now right around this 180 to 190 area uh, this is where we found support in 2014 2015 so let's see if the bulls step in and buy this area again um, if it starts to break down from here you know, there's a big pivot back from 2013, right around 118, but not a whole lot of supply to work with, um, you know, if, if it wants to start retracing some of this longer term trend. So certainly keep an eye out there uh, in Tesla. So that's that's it for this video. Um, I don't have any trade ideas, haven't gone through things yet, um, but perhaps I'll post some later this evening. If you like the video, do subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.